Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Stumble98, and this is my video covering Sonic Project 06 Shadows Campaign. I'm a speedrunner for Sonic Project 06, which is a fan remake by lead developer Chaos X in the Unity engine, remaking and reimagining Sonic 06, if it were, you know, actually a good game. Uh, currently, right now, we have all of Sonic stages and all of Shadow stages here in the beginning of 2023 with the release of Silver Stages just on the horizon. Shadow's speedrun consists of us going through all nine of his stages, including Rouge's Tropical Jungle, from beginning to end, and you can do it whatever order you want. I personally am going to be doing it in the list order as it's shown here. Let's go ahead and get started here with Shadow's speedrun in three, two, one... Let's roll. So starting off with White Acropolis here, this game does move extremely fast, so I will do my best to explain everything that I'm doing. But of course, some stuff will be missed as this is a Sonic game. So the big thing I want to note in the beginning here is that Shadow has in fact regained his ability to spin dash. For some reason in Retail 06, which is what I'll refer to the original Sonic 06 that released on Xbox 360 and PS3 as, um, Shadow did not have the spin dash, but thankfully, Chaos, seeing that as basically a flaw in the original game, has re-implemented the spin dash back for Shadow, which is very useful and makes his speed run quite fun. But this game doesn't stop being insanely kinetics because we are now Rouge the Bat. And with Rouge the Bat, what we are going to do is use her gliding ability um, that she has, of course, to head on over to the Switch here. Uh, unlike Retail 06, she actually has her martial arts here in Project 06, so... Uh, we're just going to use that to hit the switch and meet up with Shadow. Alrighty, so because hub worlds aren't currently implemented into Sonic P06, uh, Chaos decided to add these little cutscenes in some of the levels between the characters, a la kind of like Sonic 3 or something like that. They're very cool, um, and you'll definitely be seeing more of those throughout the speed run here as we move along. So, if you're familiar with Retail 06, you know you're supposed to jump in one of Shadow's vehicles, the buggy, and destroy all these searchlights. But thankfully, Chaos made it able for us to just kind of uh, use the homing attack to scale the searchlights and then we can use the chaos spear or just a good old homing attack to destroy the searchlight itself open the door and get us into Eggman's base got about 20 seconds of a result screen here but we are going to move straight on from white acropolis into kingdom valley of course obviously this is a pc game so not much to note but the load times are a lot faster Beginning in section one of Kingdom Valley here, you can see that we are in Shadow's Hang Glider. This is the vehicle we are going to be seeing the most, and unfortunately is the most bland. So we're just going to be uh, double tapping A every three seconds to get a burst of speed and go through those sections as quickly as possible. Moving on here, we are switching back to Rouge the Bat almost immediately. And what is going to be happening is we're going to search for some keys. Unlike Retail 06 that had these three keys in the same spot every single time, Chaos actually gave each key three unique locations, allowing for 27 different combinations of key sets in Project 06, at least in Kingdom Valley's case. Um, thankfully, the area is a bit small, so it's very easy to learn where these key sets are. Unfortunately, it looks like we are going to be getting one of the worst key sets, the Ones that tend to be locked behind enemies here, or uh, cages, as you saw with these last two keys, tend to be the worst, but as long as we switch before a minute on the timer, it's generally a pretty good pace. So, as we're done with Rouge, we're going to switch back to Shadow and enter his hover car, which we're going to immediately do a bit of a crazy trick here, is we're going to use the fact that the hover car has a bit of interesting programming, in that uh, the uh, there's actually invisible wheels underneath it, um, which allow us to scale any terrain, because of course it's a hover car, so it doesn't abide by uh, the laws of physics all the time, so we can actually scale those rocks and then use its hover ability to go straight to the load trigger to get us into the next section of Kingdom Valley here. So we are finally getting to see a bit of Shadow's actual platforming prowess, and it's pretty good. 
Um, one thing you're going to see me do is shadow sometimes will jump ridiculously high. That's a consequence of a little glitch in the game called the double input glitch, just based on how uh, Chaos programmed Project 06 to read inputs. If we press X and A, at the same time with pretty much every character, at least in Shadow's campaign, it is every character, uh, we basically get two uh, to two and a half times the jump height, kind of depending on how well you do the input and how well uh, you jump there. Another quick thing here I just want to say is that I'm doing a bunch of spin kicks because spin kicks actually preserve the momentum of however fast the character is moving. That dash panel sends us a lot quicker than if we did the spin dash up that hill uh, because you do move slower when you move uphill in this game. So doing the spin kicks there kind of circumvents uh, moving slowly there. We're going to do another instance of the double input glitch. We're going to jump right up here, break that stained glass, and booyah, we have finished Kingdom Valley. One other thing I want to note movement-wise is Chaos actually gave us the ability to switch between three different types of jump dashes in this game. The straight, the curved, and the legacy. The curved I won't talk about because it isn't used in any case, but after this quick cutscene, I'll explain the other two. You get this cute little interaction between Sonic and Shadow at the beginning of his Crisis City here. And as you're going to see, the buggy is not present as it was in Retail 06. That's because the spin dash, of course, has properties of a game that tends to have the spin dash. Cough, cough, not Sonic Lost World. Um, and we actually move faster rolling down the slopes than we would if we took Shadow's buggy. And because of that fact, and because it just works a lot better gameplay-wise to spin dash, Chaos ultimately decided to remove the buggy in this section. But anyway, with what I was talking about earlier, there's three different jump dash types. I'm gonna talk about the two that would be used in speedrunning, which is the straight jump dash and legacy jump dash. The straight jump dash functions exactly like how the jump dash works in retail Sonic 06, where Sonic and Shadow would just move forward in a straight line. The consequence of that jump dash type though is that you lose all your momentum. However, the legacy jump dash, which is the one I currently have equipped right now, um, it works similarly to how the jump dash works in Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog, where it inherits your momentum of uh, whatever you're moving. So if you're moving up, the jump dash will be influenced up. If you're moving down, the jump dash will be influenced down. And you'll see a little bit of that uh, influence from the spring here. We're going to do a quick jump dash to send Shadow straight to that rail, which is really, really cool. Uh, Legacy jump dash is very much superior once you get a hang on how Project 06 controls. Um, the only detriment to it, especially if you're playing as Sonic, is because it inherits momentum, uh, you can't really use it to save yourself if you maybe miss a jump or something like that. Um, but if you have a handle, or at least somewhat of a adept handle of, on this game, uh, it can be very, very useful. And basically makes uh, Shadow speedrun as fun as it is, because uh, it can really keep the flow going. What you saw me do back there is in fact a bad nick bounce. The uh, ability to jump on enemies, to spin jump on enemies and bad nick bounce has been reintroduced into Project 06. And I'm very thankful for it because it's one of my favorite mechanics in all of the Sonic games. Um, anyway, moving on here to section three of Crisis City. Uh, how's that for a segue? <laughs> uh, we just have another hang glider section here where we're just gonna Go above all the debris and double tap the A button every three seconds to get a burst of speed. Using another bad nick bounce there and a bit of a terrain, a uh, bit of the terrain to our advantage. Um, we are going to go ahead and uh, do a double input glitch, get up onto that ledge there using the pulley and then skip a bit of the level here uh, just with some extra homing attacks and homing attack refreshes, which I don't think I've explained yet is that Sonic and Shadow actually have the ability in this game to do two uh, jump dashes. One after you jump, and then another one after you do their air action. So in Shadow's case, you would do a jump dash, use his air chaos spear, and then you can jump dash slash homing attack again. An interesting thing about this is because of the double input glitch that I talked about for doing the high jump to gain a bit of extra height with the characters, is uh, it actually affects this as well. If I do a double input, I skip the jump dash, or I skip the air action animation and just straight up do another jump dash, which is very useful in Shadow's case, because like I said, the legacy jump dash inherits momentum. And with Shadow's Chaos Spear, he actually stops moving completely. Um, so we can keep the momentum going. 
Similarly, it works well for Sonic because with the Legacy Jump Dash, he has a bounce attack. So if you did your bounce attack air action, your next jump dash would just send you straight down, which is useful in its own way. But uh, if you do the double input glitch to do another jump dash, you bypass that, which allows Sonic to do some insane, insane stuff as well. Here in Flame Core, we are going to be seeing the beginning of us using Shadow's Chaos Boost abilities. In Project 06, Shadow naturally has his first three Chaos Boost abilities, the Chaos Snap, the Chaos Lance, and the Chaos Blast, which you can fill by defeating enemies here. But if you get all the S ranks in Shadow's campaign, there's a special item called the Memory Shard Light that appears at the end of Shadow's campaign. And what the Memory Shard Light does is allow us to access a level 4 version of Chaos Boost. So as long as we fill up our maturity meter here, we can unleash Shadow's inhibitor rings and go into a bit of a Super Saiyan state here. While working differently from a Super Form, it does function similar similarly in that we are completely invincible with Shadow, as well as we can one-shot any enemy regardless of the health bar. Secondly, all of his Chaos abilities require none of the Action Gauge to use. However, the Action Gauge will drain very quickly while we are in this uninhibited state. One thing that's different from a Super Form is one, it doesn't draw rings, of course. It draws on the Action Gauge in the bottom right there. But what it also does is if we completely run out of Action Gauge, we would actually be halted for about five or six seconds as Shadow recovers from uh, unleashing all his power. So a way we can bypass that is we can restart the section. So the moment we load into Flame Core Section 2, you can actually see a little bit in the loading screen there. We immediately pause and restart the section, and that resets Shadow back to his, uh, his normal state, as if you had never used Chaos Boost at all. So a fun little uh, bit of optimization there, so we don't have to either, you know, find the... Uh, find a path where we can destroy enough enemies to keep uninhibited mode, or take the six-second time loss. A uh, very cool little bit of game mechanics there. Switching on over to Rouge, we are just going to use a bit of high jumps and our gliding abilities to uh, hit all these orbs, which we need to open the door. Uh, Flame Core is probably the level that is most similar between both Sonic and Shadow. In fact, it's nearly identical. The orb placement is different, and there's a bit of extra level design in Shadow Section 1. But funnily enough, Flame Core is one of Sonic's easiest stages in his speedrun, and it's one of Shadow's hardest stages, especially to go fast in, in his speedrun, just due to the differences of how the character works and that Shadow is a bit more combat-oriented, and this is a very spacious level. But we are going to go ahead and just finish up Flame Core here. We are on a beautiful pace, and I hope you guys are enjoying so far. If you're watching on the YouTube video, I highly recommend uh, leaving a comment telling me what you think about the game so far, and uh, if you are excited for the silver release and what you are excited about. Moving on from Flame Core here, we are going to head into Radical Train, which can be Shadow's shortest stage, but is also his most dangerous stage, because we are going to be avoiding actually destroying the train here. So we can use a bit of our movement skills, mainly the double input glitch, in order to completely bypass destroying the train. Now, this is a bit risky because the train is still moving, and if Eggman were to escape from that first section, we would actually uh, lose. We would have to restart the level, and it takes Eggman about 40 seconds, I believe, to do that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and avoid the second one as well, so there's actually two timers running. But thankfully, Shadow Section 2 starts very, very quickly, so we don't have to worry about Eggman escaping there. Now, you're going to see a bit more craziness here, as there's actually an invisible wall blocking Shadow from accessing this train, but if you charge up the Chaos Spear, you actually fire five projectiles, and that can damage the train. So, unfortunately, we aren't going to be seeing the motorcycle in this playthrough, even though it's one of Shadow's coolest vehicles and works really well in Project 06. Uh, that is significantly faster, uh, destroying the spear like, or destroying the train like that. So, that's how we're going to do it. Moving on to Aquatic Base, which is my personal favorite level in Shadow's campaign because it features all four of his Chaos abilities. What we're going to do is quickly uh, destroy all these enemies. We actually have to outrun these Light Cores that are chasing after Shadow and unlock Chaos Boost in order to immediately get to level 2. Do a couple Chaos Snaps. Because we're level 2, we have access to Chaos Lance, which one-shots these worms. 
and then immediately go into level three and then into level four so that we can just spin dash right through these guys and destroy them in one hit heading on into silver section silver the hedgehog functions way better than he does in retail 06 uh pretty sure you know you could say that for majority of po6 is that it functions much better than retail 06 but uh he does have some new abilities but the main thing we're going to be using is his upgraded teleport dash which as long as we have meter and as long as we hold the a button we can actually continue bit of quirkiness here because silver relies on the action gates when switching back to shadow if you have full meter as silver you can uh immediately go into chaos boost with shadow and then we can immediately go into level two and then kill those enemies to get to level three and then initiate a chaos blast which has gotten a significant boost and that is our only time we are going to be intentionally seeing chaos blast in this speed run to destroy all those worms open that door and get us straight into section two section two here it's pretty rudimentary it's very similar to sonic section two at least until we get kind of near uh where you would normally switch to knuckles here we're just going to destroy some enemies using that chaos snap which in this game functions uh like a spin dash in retail 06 one of the retail 06 and po6 speedrunners gordon ramsay not the chef he's a, <laughs> a completely different person though it would be cool if it was the actual chef uh, but he's a very cool individual and has written a whole thesis on how chaos snap works in retail 06 but thankfully just for us it's just uh shadow gains the ability to teleport and doesn't have that uh homing attack time very cool section here using uninhibited mode and the ability to destroy those enemies all in one hit and we complete aquatic base getting this really cool uh results screen with uh shadow in his uninhibited state here very cool stuff i'll be very interested to see in the silver release shadow is getting almost a complete overhaul to his campaign i'll be interested to see if anything changes in his uninhibited mode moving on to wave ocean here we have shadow's final hang glider section this is the most involved section unfortunately we can't you know just fly straight and just do some boosting we have to do some actual gameplay here uh, where we go into this tunnel, but it is important that we boost every third time here. And if we do it optimally, we can actually bypass all of those lasers guaranteed every single time. I actually missed a boost there. I boost a little bit too early uh, because nothing happens if you do, uh, excuse me, double tap A within the three second cooldown of each boost. Um, but we are just going to head here. He did extend it a little bit. Uh, to this part of Sonic's mock speed section, but now we are switching to E123 Omega, who pretty much we are just going to be very literally running and gutting in this particular section of Wave Ocean here. But uh, we're going to be spending quite a bit of time with him in the next stage, Dusty Desert. So uh, I'm not totally worried about um, explaining what he does here. All you got to know is he can jump and he can hover. And we're just going to do a bit of grinding here and then jump off of that, preserve a little momentum. Because Omega is the heaviest character in Project 06, so he uh, has the uh, <laughs> the toughest time preserving his speed. But uh, we're going to get another cool cutscene here. Not only is the addition of uh, reverb on Mephilus' voice really cool, but as you saw there, that's a little sneak peek into an extra mode that Omega actually has. Uh, available gameplay wise it's not just for that cutscene experiencing a little bit of lag here that just happens with uh you know sometimes these unity projects the longer they run the uh more things sometimes turn into a powerpoint hopefully that won't be the case when we get to dusty desert as we do have two more stages after this but we're just going to do a light dash and another set of spin kicks to preserve some momentum jump over that invisible wall and then do a couple spin dash jumps to just fly through uh, this little platforming section here with shadow again chaos extended the platforming a bit and put the uh hover car over here instead of it being earlier in the stage so we do get to play a little bit more shadow um one of my favorite things about uh shadow's story is actually hitting the goal ring here in wave ocean because if i can hit it just right if we do that we should be able to see our friend the hover car show up in the results screen here i hope i'm not putting my foot in my mouth Will we see it? It might be stuck somewhere. That can happen sometimes. Ah, there it is. <laughs> Showing up, saying hi. Uh, it tends to fly around in the background and stuff. But we are headed into Shadow's final full-length stage, Dusty Desert. 
And in section one here, we are going to not do what the game says to do. Because normally what you're supposed to do is go through a bunch of pillars and it's a really slow and admittedly extremely boring section. Uh, even in PO6, uh, there's <laughs> unfortunately because of the base material, there's not much you can do. But thankfully, the trigger to open the door is just to that the right of that destructible barrier. Uh, so we can open the door and completely bypass Shadow's uh, section one of Dusty Desert. Will that be kept in in future releases of this game? I have no idea. Do a bit of spin dash combat there because the spin dash does do constant damage as long as you're within the enemy's hitbox. So it destroys those multi-hit enemies. And here we are with E123 Omega. So in addition to moving and hovering, we have this new Gatling gun mode, which is great for dealing with enemies, especially in this particular section with Omega. We do have a uh, lock on reticle and fire, very similar to how Gamma worked in Sonic Adventure. And uh, one other thing we're going to be seeing in the next room here is a shotgun blast. Uh, unfortunately, I messed up a little bit of a skip there. Normally what you can do with Gatling gun mode, if uh, you hit it just right, you can actually shoot that switch there. And it just saves a little bit of time later on here. But now you're seeing, seeing the shotgun blast, which does two damage instead of one that the pea shooters do here. Or that the pea shooter does. But thankfully, uh, we were able to do that fight room relatively quickly. If we can just high jump here to kind of bypass this little platforming section with Omega, hit the switch, and continue on in Dusty Desert. I would definitely say that Omega is probably the weakest of all the characters currently available in Project 06. But uh, along with the rest of Shano's, Shadow's campaign, campaign, my goodness, words are hard, he is getting a complete overhaul to his moveset as well, even regaining his melee attack uh, from Sonic Heroes in place of the Shotgun Blast, I believe. So that'll be really cool to play through the stages with him. But we're just going to use Gatling gun mode one more time to completely mow down that enemy fight room. And because we didn't hit the switch, I have to do a bit of extra platforming here. We can enter Gatling gun mode once again, hit the switch from there. And that is going to open up the door for us over here. And as we hit this switch with Omega, we are going to switch back on over to Shadow and finish off Dusty Desert here. Very cool bit of final movement. Uh, one thing that we've been trying to figure out in terms of Shadow Speedrun is how to do this final room. Because uh, we can use a bit of slow spin dash maneuvers there uh, to destroy that worm really quickly. But this worm, just with how uh, the timing works on the rest of the enemies there, can be a bit uh, mean because there is a attack they can do. Or I guess you could call it a defense where they become completely impervious to all damage. Other than if you use a level 1 Chaos Spear on them which uh, can be very annoying for the speed run. So thankfully that didn't happen and we hit sub three in Dusty Desert, which is awesome. A very good time, especially in a real time run like this one. But we're going to go ahead and finish off uh, our time with Shadow speedruns here, not with Shadow, but with Rouge, as we go ahead and finish off here. Uh, just going to skip that cutscene real quick. There wasn't any cool animation. It was just a bit of showing you where the final key was. Unlike um, Kingdom Valley, where all three keys had three locations, the final key is always in the same spot. So there are only um, there are only nine uh, different key sets here. So it makes Tropical Jungle a little bit easier to learn where all the keys are. Um, but like I said, it's not too hard. They're both relatively easy to figure out. That was an okay first key. Looks like we got this key over. Uh, that's all the way on top. This is actually the worst key you can get. <laughs> and a bit difficult to uh, get to if you don't approach it right. But we can go ahead and do this. And climb our way up to the top here. And destroy that enemy. And like I said, the final key is always in the same spot. So once we have that second key. We're going to use these fire crates to our advantage. To destroy these enemies really quickly. Do a quick bounce on that guy. Opens up the cage. And then just do a quick bit of gliding. And in almost under one minute, we are going to go ahead and finish off Shadow's run. And that was Shadow's campaign in Sonic Project 06. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If uh, you need real time, if, you, uh, if I submit this to a marathon, the real time of that run was a 23.07. So... That being said, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, definitely check out my Sonic run if you're still around and haven't gotten the chance to yet. And um, yeah, take care. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.